Hello, I'm David D. Hilscher. I'm a critical thinker, a dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professors won't tell you, something your mass media out there will not tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. Today I'm going to talk about something really important in science, and it has nothing to do with science. It has to do everything with human beings and generally animals. We're going to talk about love, falling in love with our ideas. We humans create ideas, art, music, and physical theories, and often we fall in love with our own creations. You know, I, I am a painter and a drawing since I was very small, and it's something I was sort of born with, and, you know, I look at a painting and I go, man, that's really good. I really feel good about that. You know, it's a little different, though, when you have a theory because you can feel good about it and fall in love with it, but that's really dangerous when it comes to science. If you paint a painting, it's a one-time thing. It's a person. It's supposed to be what you are looking at as the world. It's filtered through this universe, through your being, and it comes out in art, and that's cool. And you can judge whether it's good or bad. See, people in general, it usually comes out, you know, pretty easy to judge. It's not like something, you know, well, you know, he painted about this and that's no longer here. So it's totally, no, that's different. But science, on the other hand, is very different. We human beings come up with these ideas and we can fall in love with our own creations. I know that a lot of people say they don't and every scientist in the mainstream goes, oh, well, of course I don't. You know, I know this could all be wrong. Okay, if you do, why do you take your grad students, set them aside, close your door and say, don't do this experiment against Einstein? Do you want to have a career? Hmm, that's because the mainstream, when it comes to falling in love with their ideas, which they do, they have a bully pulpit. And the difference between dissidents and the mainstream is that the, the mainstream will quash any new ideas. So you got to paint, it's sort of like, fascism. You got to do what it, you're told. If you don't do it, you, they do whatever you want. They kill you. Basically, they kill your career. So they are not allowing those alternatives. But alternative scientists have their own problems. So they also suffer from this. They will come up with their particle models or equations, for instance, and say, oh, and here's the particle models, and here's my model for the neutrino. And I'm going to say to them, the neutrino doesn't exist. Well, my model can describe all particle physics, and part of that symmetry and all that stuff is the neutrino, so this is how it works. Like the one guy, the surfer dude, has 256 uh, circles, toroids, whatever, all together, and then this is gravity, these three, four points, and this is a neutrino, and problem is, is what they are doing is another big problem. It's called over-applying your model or theory. I'm going to come up with theory of everything so I can apply it to everything. The whole world is uh, electric. The whole world is based on gravity and Newton. The whole world is based on my model and my model will describe everything. That's not really good because if you're going to do that, you're going to describe things that don't exist. So what are going to happen to all those dissidents who are describing the neutrino and then finally when we realize particle physics is a mess, they're going to go, ooh, just did all the particle physics so I get thrown out with the, I'm with the bathwater with the baby. So dissonance do fall in love. And another symptom of, other than over-applying that, uh, I've got this little idea, now it's, it's going to do everything, it's going to describe everything. Uh, another one's called what I call the Savior Syndrome. And the mainstream's involved with this as well, because they accuse dissidents of the Savior System. Oh, you're going to be the next Einstein. Hey, Dave, you're making these videos. You're going to be the next Neil deGrasse. No, I'm not, because Neil deGrasse doesn't allow for critical thinking, doesn't allow for alternatives to mainstream science. But I'm not here for that. I'm not here for fame. I'm The artist side of me, someone asked me, the artist side of me said, is out here because we people who are artists and scientists, which you can be both, um, I, I, I hate, hate, hate 
when there's there's a truth that out there that no one knows. And this group of scientists, thousands and thousands of us outside the mainstream has have these truths. But the problem is, is the mainstream who thinks about fame asks these questions. I've talked about this before. Oh, you want to be the next Einstein? No, you are worried about fame. Your question is about fame. It has nothing to do with science. The next Einstein has to do with the human being who we revere, who we've fallen in love with, who can do no wrong. You want to be the next person. That's the question. They don't ask you, oh, what's your theory? Maybe you have something better. That should be the question. If they come back at you like the mainstream does and say, oh, you want to be the next Einstein, documentary people asked me, oh, you're the only one who can who who has found that Einstein's wrong and all this stuff is wrong? Why you? And I'm thinking, aren't you interested in finding out what I found? It's sort of like the Democrats who get all these emails saying that they supported Clinton and were bashing Bernie and, and really pretty much screwed him over. And they go, oh, Russians did it. And the, and the American people are going, wait, we don't care who gave it. The problem is, is what's in them. That's the same thing. We have the same thing going on with mainstream science. So you have the syndrome, but dissidents can't get out of this either because what happens? I see it all the time. This person comes and says, here's my theory. Uh, sends, they send me an email and says, here it is. Take it. Um, do what you want with it. Let people argue over it, but I am come down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments. I have them. I found them. It's me. I don't have time to debate this. I don't care if you disagree with it. I don't care what your arguments. I am giving you this. And again, that's the savior syndrome. They're going to save us. Dissidents have it too. And then they over apply. They apply everything to it. They won't listen to criticisms. So they are at fault too. The human being wants to be in love, which comes to my conclusion for today, which is the same thing. Engineering attitude is the real physics attitude. Engineers, they're never married to what they, they, they basically, the way my dad sort of puts it, he's an electrical engineer, he said, he's a retired electrical engineer and he's got a physics degree, he goes, we're lucky to cobble together these little equations that maybe can describe something. And if it it's useful, great. If it's not, throw it out. Of course, then we that's why particles physics should be thrown out of everything they're discovering. Oh, do we have they're trying to make quantum mechanics now? Of course, they don't really understand what's going on in quantum mechanics. They have no model for light, they have no model for gravity, they have no mo model for electromagnetism. None, none of that, but doesn't matter. I'm shooting a photon, which they don't know because light's a wave, but it's a particle. And they're doing these things that are, no, they're not. We have a model of light and gravity and we can explain what's happening. It has nothing to do with particles knowing what they're doing. There's a pretty easy answer to it, but no one wants to know because they're falling in love because they can go on tour and talk about how amazing this, you know, if one photon goes around here and you see it with your, and you see it here, well, you look at it and if you look at it in this certain way, because of quantum mechanics and this, this double slit experiment, the, there's a history of racing theory that... <laughs> okay, but again, this is falling in love. This is savior syndrome and over applying. It goes on, but the engineers, thank you, you exist. Don't get married to anything they want, anything they're saying. So that they would say, that's why engineers like, oh, the Large Hadron Collider, here it is. Um, nothing's really come out of it. So wake me up when you have something real, okay? Stop talking about unicorns. Wake me up. That's the majority. That's a majority of us. That's we are. The people, the intellectuals and the people in theoretical anythings are the ones who have the they have the bully pulpit. They have the money because they're telling you, you know, we can find the God particle. If we have the God particle, we have all power. Uh, I can go on and on and on. But remember, falling in love with our ideas is what gets in the way of science. Be an engineer. Have an engineering attitude. And remember, don't take what anyone says on faith. Stay thinking. Stay, oh, stay critical. Then stay thinking. I'm Dave DeHilster, your science therapist. Ciao for now.